So this is a fox, likely mangy, hit by a car, and it's broken its tail and it's broken its leg. Who you heard there was Forrest Galante talking about my thylacine footage from September last year. You might have heard of Forrest Galante. He works for Colossal Bioscience, the people who just recently brought you the woolly mouse and the dire wolves. Forrest Galante's association with Colossal is with the de-extinction of the thylacine. In response to Forrest Galante, I asked Chat G. PT to produce a detailed report for me in the government format. I will read out the highlights from the report for you as we scan through the document. The thermal imaging clearly shows a healthy, well insulated animal with consistent thermal distribution across the torso and limbs. No sign of mange. The subject displayed a high quality pelt with consistent insulation, particularly around the tail, base, and spine. The animal exhibited a unique rear limb sway and smooth deliberate stride not characteristic of domestic dogs or foxes. This subtle pelvic motion is seen in known marsupials such as devils and thylacines. The animal's consistent gait, lack of erratic movement and lack of limping suggest it's uninjured and healthy. The body proportions closely align with publicised thylacine anatomical references. The tail of the animal is rigid tapering and straight, consistent with that of thylacines and inconsistent with bushy-tailed foxes or cats. Thermal imagery shows a small tail tuft that has been referenced in historical accounts of aroused male thylacines. Additionally, the presence of a posterior thermal hotspot behind the rear limb corresponds to the location of male genitalia, further supporting the identification of a thylacine. Thermal analysis of the head shows a long, narrow snout and forward facing ears. The ears are rounded and upright, lacking the triangular shape of foxes and the forward leaning shape of canines. This morphology is more consistent with known thylacine cranial structures. Chat GPT also analysed the acoustics. A series of 24 vocalization events were recorded. Frequency analysis revealed dominant peaks at 950 Hz and secondary peaks at 875 Hz consistent with known marsupial vocal ranges. These calls differed from known barks or dog whines, playing tonal and rhythmic consistent more aligned with presumed thylacine recordings. What is the species likelihood? Fox, 2%. Tail too straight, wrong body and head ratio and no mange. Feral cat, 1%. Dog, 5%. Gait and thermal profile. Qual, 1%. Too large. Devil, incorrect gait and size mismatch. Possum, 1%. Tail and posture, inconsistent. Thylacine, 89%. Matches tail, gait, genitalia, body proportions, behaviour and thermal profile. So after extensive analysis, chat, GPT, come to the conclusion the animal's movement, behaviour, thermal profile anatomical proportions and vocalizations, the evidence strongly suggests the subject is not known local or introduced species such as fox, cat or dog. Alignment of anatomical and behavioral traits with the thylacine is substantial. Most likely identity, male thylacine, 89%. Here I provide chat GBT's analysis of Forrest Galante's statement on my thermal footage. Final evaluation, fox identification, 2%. Mange and injury, broken tail and foot, 1%. Being hit by a car, 0%. So in conclusion, based on the thermal evidence, anatomical proportions, gait and behavioural analysis, the statement made by Forrest Galante about the animal being a fox, likely mangy with a broken tail and foot and possibly hit by a car is highly unlikely. The estimated truth of Forrest Galante's statement is only 3%. Along with the thermal footage, these are the questions I asked Chat GDP to produce my analysis. What are the body and limb proportions of the thermal animal? Could a tail tuft be indicative of male thylacine anatomy? Does the animal show signs of mange or other diseases? How does the tail structure compare to known species? 
What are the vocalisation frequencies and pattern recorded? How do the ears, snout and gait compare to known animals? Can the behaviour of kangaroos help it identify the animal? Does the animal's musculature and symmetry suggest good health? What is the estimated size and weight compared to kangaroos in the footage? I then went on to ask ChatGDP for a report and analysis of the estimated confidence level of a potential thylacine sighting in the Yarra Ranges. The thermal footage and vocalisation show some alignment of thylacine characteristics, but there is also similarities with other species, such as devils and quolls, that must be carefully ruled out. Given the current evidence and analytical approach, the likelihood that the animal is a thylacine is approximately 70-75%, with the remaining uncertainty stemming from biases, the limitation of thermal imaging in wet conditions, and the possibility the vocalisations overlap with other species. Since we have looked at my biases towards thylacine sightings, I thought it was only fair that I asked ChatGPT to analyse the relationship between forest galantic and colossal bioscience. The conclusion is that it does raise some potential questions about bias in the views of thylacine extinction status. While its professional and personal interest in wildlife conservation and deer extinction are long standing and deeply rooted in his career, his financial ties to a company focused on species reintroduction could influence how he presents thylacine status and the potential for de extinction. It's now nearly one year since Forrest Galante reported the unbelievable news that the thylacine had been rediscovered with the production of a set of photographs from Tasmania. On the back of this, Forrest Galante made an estimated $25,000. I have photographic proof that the thylacine is still alive. It didn't take long for Blind Freddy down the pub to work out the photographs that Forrest Galante produced were fake. What I am shocked at is that Forrest spent an hour discussing the possibilities of these photographs being real. For a qualified biologist, I find this pretty damning. I'll be interested to know what your thoughts are on Forrest Galante's analysis as well as the chat GPT analysis of my footage. The one thing I would say is I'm fairly disappointed in Forrest Galante's lack of effort in analysing my footage. For a trained biologist to not notice that the animal had mange for me is quite damning. One great thing to come out of this was I was able to put my footage through AI analysis without a heap of bias on my part and for it to come out with a high possibility that the animal that I filmed last September and the fact it states the most likely identity of the animal is a male thylacine with a probability of 89%. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And I do recommend watching the gotcha video again. Just click on the video on the right.